What's up everyone? John Ringer from Techno Buffalo here with the review of this guy. This is the Apple Watch. As I do with all my reviews, I want to give a disclaimer. I use this for four and a half days, and if you couldn't tell, uh, it's the blue sport version in 42 millimeter size. We have a full written review as well if you want to hear anything in more detail. Uh, Todd, who wrote it, actually has some differing opinions on what I'm going to say. So if you want to hear another side of the coin, uh, again, hit the link down below and check that. And I'll talk about some of Todd's points as we go through the review. A few things to keep in mind when we talk about the Apple Watch. This is the first totally new product from Apple in quite a while, and the very first new OS from them since iOS first debuted in 2007. Uh, the format of this is going to be a lightning review. I'm just going to go through point by point questions I had and questions you guys had when I asked on Twitter and in the unboxing comments. First, my big one was battery. I was really concerned about it. Uh, we heard early reports before it was even announced that Apple was really struggling with battery. Uh, it's small. Uh, I fixed it and their teardown showed it was just a little bit bigger than 200 milliamp hours. Uh, it's actually really good. I had about 30 to 40% left by the time end of day hit or came around. Take it off the charger around 7 a.m. It's always on my wrist uh, until about 11 or so uh, p.m. So able to easily get through a full day. You're gonna wanna charge it every day, uh, but not an issue at all. Even on the first day, when I was really playing with it and using it heavily, I was still able to get through the full day without having to go into power reserve mode. So don't worry about that aspect of it. You'll be able to easily breeze through a day. All right, so what about the UI? Uh, when I tested at Apple's event a few months back, it was kind of confusing, and there was a definite learning curve, and there still is, and actually I got the product on my wrist. What does tapping do? What does pressing do? What does double tapping do? What does force touching do? There's a lot to learn here with the Apple Watch. And it's definitely the least intuitive of all of Apple's OS's. You give an iPhone to a toddler, they can figure out how to do things. Not so uh, with this guy. Uh, but it's not to say it's not very capable. Um, the icon screen we go and navigate to find all your apps is a huge pain to navigate and find through. There's no real rhyme or reason to how they're ordered. You could rearrange things yourself, but you're oftentimes scrolling through or using the digital crown to find stuff. We're going to talk a little bit more about the UI later, but it is capable and it does have a learning curve. This is a question you guys really want to know on Twitter about bands. Uh, it's certainly easily replaceable. You just sort of push a button on the back, slide it out, push a button on the other side, slide it out. Very easy. I haven't had any sort of discoloration at all uh, on the sport band. It looks exactly like it did when I first got it. Uh, one feature on the watch that probably saves a lot of battery and works really well is when you raise it up, the screen turns on. When you put your wrist down, it turns off. And it does it very quickly and with almost 100% accuracy. I was actually really impressed with how well it did it and how well it knew that it was being raised and turned on. So no delay there at all. I didn't have to wait for it to turn on. Uh, it just worked as you'd expect. A big issue that I've had with smartwatches is outdoor visibility. This is really good uh, outdoors, no issue uh, at all. Again though, this is the sport model, it does not have the sapphire screen. Uh, supposedly that model is a little harder to view in direct sunlight, so bear that in mind. So what about that Taptic engine Apple has been really talking a lot about? Um, the bumps to me in it feel a little bit weak, and I've got mine turned all the way up to the top. But others have said that they had to turn it all the way down to chuck out the preference. It feels different than a vibration that you might be used to. It really feels like someone's kind of tapping your wrist. It's a really neat touch. I can see that getting way more useful in, in the upcoming software updates, and certainly uh, as the watch gets more advanced over different iterations. Force touch though is probably the coolest feature of this watch, I think hands down. It's really neat that not only that it works, but it can recognize a harder push. The downside though, it's really inconsistent where it gets used and how. But I can really see the utility and what it's going to be when it makes its way to a phone, which I think is going to be the killer feature on the 6S and the 6S Plus. Suffice to say though, I wish there was more consistency in apps with what it could do. Force touching in the music app, for example, pulls up more menu options, but force touching on other screens doesn't do anything. You kind of just have to guess and try it and see if it's going to do anything for you. Glances are kind of like widgets on the watch, and they really come in handy. They're pretty customizable via the companion app. I almost use glances more than I use actual apps because it's just easier to find than having to sort through apps or ask Siri to do it for me. And speaking of Siri, without a keyboard, you rely on Siri for almost everything. It does a really nice job filtering out background noise when you're trying to dictate a message or reply back to someone. There's a lot of people around you. Uh, I will say though, Siri was definitely on the slower side. And the more I use it, the more I begin to realize yet again how far behind Siri is uh, versus its Google counterpart. All right, so what about waterproofing? It's a watch, it's probably gonna get a little bit wet. Apple doesn't necessarily claim waterproofing, but I took a chance and I just wore mine in the shower and I had zero issues at all. It's still working like it did from day one. There's been a ton of videos out there, people taking it in the pool, leaving it in water for 30 minutes and no problems at all. So it's not officially waterproof, but if you just use it the way you would any other watch, and maybe don't take it in the ocean. Even if you did, you'd probably be okay, but be smart about it. You're not gonna have any problems. 
Speaking about being smart, let's talk about scratches. Uh, it's pretty durable, but I didn't take a knife to it. I didn't see if it could withstand diamonds. You know, if you think about it as a product you're gonna wear, just again, be smart. If you bang it against a wall, you might get a scratch on it. It's made of aluminum and something on your wrist. It's not gonna be pristine through the entire life of it, and to expect it to be pristine is very, very silly. Uh, but in my four and a half days, I've had no problems and no sign of wear or tear yet at all. So I promised I would talk about apps. Fun thing to know, they don't necessarily run on the device yet. They are running through your phone, which means it's gotta communicate with your phone, so it also makes them very slow. Take Shazam, for example. There's a Shazam companion app for the watch. You can go ahead and open that up, and it looks like it's listening on your watch. In fact, though, it's listening through your phone, so whether your watch is telling you anything, you gotta still have your phone out of your pocket to listen. That's sort of a lot of the things that you see with the watch. It could be useful, but right now it relies on your phone way too much. All right, so what about messaging? Uh, being able to send heartbeats and drawings to friends is fun, but the novelty definitely wore off kind of quickly. Uh, dictating messages was handy and it worked well. Being able to send voice worked well. Uh, being able to customize emoji was neat. Um, but besides that, it didn't do anything that was sort of groundbreaking for me. Um, but again, that wore off. If all your friends have Apple Watches, maybe your experience will vary. So you can use this to answer phone calls. It actually has a speaker and microphone built in. The speaker was pretty loud. Uh, I was able to hear when people are around me, and also the microphone does a nice job about filtering out ambient noise so people can hear you uh, as well. One of the features Apple is touting about the watch is the activity monitor. They want you to get up, get active. I was really surprised how accurate uh, it was when it came to tracking my heart rate uh, and also the steps. I really like, I found it actually helpful to remind me to stand up and move. Every couple hours it would tell me like, hey, Lardo, stand up, which I found hypocritical because this thing never moved at all. It did my wrist the whole time. The Apple Watch, like most smartwatches now, is just a notification machine. I really have yet to see a killer must-have feature on any of them. The Apple Watch doesn't do anything that Android Wear or even Pebble doesn't do. Now, for the most part, I'm pretty ambivalent towards the watch, just like I was towards Android Wear. But this ambivalence comes with a really hefty price, sort of at the lowest end at $349 and probably at $399 for the 42mm Sport. It gets very expensive. Uh, it does what I thought it would do, and it does what it does well. I just don't know necessarily need what it does. That was a lot of does in there. Uh, I think you're best served waiting for Gen 2, and presumably native app support is going to come. Uh, perhaps it'll thin down even better battery life. Maybe that sapphire screen will filter its way down to the sport model. So what's the score? We did this one a little bit differently. I wanted to give this a 7. Todd, who did our written review and also has a sport model, wanted to give it an 8. Check his opinions out again down below. So we met in the middle with a 7.5. Go into this knowing what it does. We're trying to figure out if it's right for you. If you want notifications, that's all you're looking for. You want the best notification system available on iOS. The Apple Watch is a good way to go. If you want more functionality, you want it to do more things, you want to see what the apps can do, uh, you're better off waiting. See what developers can put out. Um, see when native app support is going to come to the watch and then make your decision. By that point, perhaps Gen 2 will already be out and you'll get a more streamlined experience product than what you have now with Apple Watch 1.0. And guys, thank you for watching. Do you agree, disagree? I'd really like to hear your thoughts on it. It's a pretty polarizing product, I know. Give the video a thumbs up. You always appreciate it. Until next time, I am John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo. Hit the big subscribe button for the latest Techno Buffalo videos almost every day. Uh, until then, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.